does it feel so goddamn good? What's up everybody, it's Prone here and welcome to episode 5 of Prone's Picks, where I'll be talking to you about some of my favourite underappreciated films and filmmakers. On today's episode, I'll be getting all patriotic and shit, and we'll be taking a look at some of my favourite Ozploitation films. Do you see me toe cut off? Do you see me mad? <laughs> Now, exploitation films are essentially low-budget exploitation films filmed in Australia in the 70s and 80s. After the introduction of the R rating in 1971, genres like horror, action, sci-fi, post-apocalyptic, sexploitation and martial arts films really started to thrive in Australia. I suggest checking out the fairly thorough documentary, Not Quite Hollywood, uh, the Wild Untold Story of Ausploitation from 2008, if you haven't already. It's a really great starting point for these type of films. Now, as per usual, I'll be shining a light on the films that I think are underrated and underseen. Um, so unfortunately, no Mad Max, no Razorback, or no Waking Fright. Um, but bear with me, still plenty of goodness coming up. So sit back, grab a bevy, and enjoy the episode. We're kicking things off today with the Ozploitation Acid Western Mad Dog Morgan. You. In the autumn of 1865, notorious bushranger Daniel Morgan crossed from New South Wales into Victoria to do battle with the law for the last time. What happened has been a secret for over 100 years. Now the fascinating truth can be told. Stan! Or he'll blow your bloody head off and I'll knock out all your teeth! The movie is an historical drama based on the life of notorious bushranger Dan Mad Dog Morgan. Morgan witnesses a bloody massacre of the Chinese on the Victorian goldfields. He becomes disillusioned and turns into a robber. He's soon arrested and sent to a prison where he's severely abused. Upon release, he becomes a bushranger, vowing revenge. He then teams up with an indigenous man who's also been wronged. They wreak havoc and soon become public enemy number one. I find it strange that nobody really talks about this film because um, it's pretty damn good and it's also one of Dennis Hopper's best performances. Legend has it that Hopper was on a pretty hectic coke and uh, booze filled bender during this production. This resulted in co-star David Gulpil going walkabout during the middle of production to ask the trees about Hopper. They told him that Hopper was most certainly crazy. Ha! Boomerang! And there's definitely times where you can tell that he's off his chops, but for me, that really adds to the intensity of his performance. The picture painted of colonial Australia is not a pretty one. A melting pot of cultures, Irish, Indigenous and Chinese, all being oppressed by the colonising English. The cinematography is stunning and in stark contrast to the brutal violence and the often off-kilter editing. There's even moments where the film is quite funny. For example, there's a weird sort of training montage where David Gilpilil's character teaches Morgan how to use indigenous weapons. It's absolutely gold. He's got giant balls, that one. While at times tonally uneven, Mad Dog Morgan is still an absolute blast. It's brutally violent, weird as fuck, and with an all-in performance from Hopper, this is one hell of a strong recommendation from me. Uh, Mad Dog Morgan is currently streaming on Amazon Prime. Up next we have the super underrated coming of age adventure Frog Dreaming, aka The Quest. Three, two, one, go! You loved him in E.T. Now Henry Thomas is back as Cody Walpole. There's no brakes! He made it! There's no brakes! 
Cody is an adventurer about to discover the secret of frog dreaming. Gaza, what do you know about a pond five miles east of Devil's Knob? I want you to promise me you'll stay away from that pond. Do you believe in monsters? Some for 20 years. I was married to one. The story centers around Cody, played by E.T.'s Henry Thomas, an American orphan living with his guardian in the Australian bush. Cody and his friends love an adventure, and they discover a mysterious underwater legend in a forgotten quarry, which leads them on a strange journey to another world. Now, I only discovered this little gem a few years ago, which is a real shame, because I feel like if I had seen this as a kid, I'd hold it in the same regard as The Goonies or Stand By Me. One of the main reasons, um, I guess, why this film succeeds is the terrific writing and directing. It's written by one of the greatest screenplay writers Australia's ever produced, Everett DeRoche, and directed by Ausploitation god Brian Trenchard-Smith. Both men are responsible for some of the best work from this period. Black fella magic. Can't see him come, can't see him go. The cast is also terrific, especially the child actors who essentially carry the film. They're cheeky and at times offensive, but always empathetic and they have tremendous heart. Apparently they all had a blast making the film and Trenchard Smith had great rapport with all the cast, getting top performances out of nearly all of them. Along with the story and cast, the setting of regional Victoria is also a plus. The indigenous mythology, while at times can be hokey, is mostly handled quite well, unlike a lot of other films from this period. While parts of the film can be quite scary, I still recommend this one for mature kids, tweens and adults who still believe in the spirit of adventure. Frog Dreaming is currently streaming on Amazon Prime and for the collectors out there, Umbrella has a fantastic Blu-ray release. We're switching it up a bit next with the super weird Aussie vampire flick, 1979's Thirst. Vampires, creatures of the night, driven by insatiable thirst. This ancient evil is now a modern industry, backed by big money. Kate, she's young, she's in love, she's the next victim. First. Kate is kidnapped by a cult called the Brotherhood, who believe that she is the descendant of notorious Elizabeth Bathory, known as the Blood Queen. The cult which harvests humans for their blood on a blood farm tries to get Kate to join. She refuses, but for how long can she deny her natural instincts and fate? Now, thirst definitely won't be for everyone. It's weird as fuck. And the story is pretty disjointed, it's kind of all over the place, but it still has heaps going for it. For one, it's a beautiful looking film. The cinematography and editing are great, and there's a nice mix of serene and disturbing imagery that's almost dreamlike in its delivery. The score by Brian May is also terrific. It's melodic and very 70s, with lots of romantic piano, flute, and strings. It even starts to go all gothic and Latin chanty in the final act when the cult stuff picks up. Pretty solid cast too. Chantelle Conturi is great as the lead, and cult actors like Max Phipps, David Hemmings, and Henry Silver are also in top form. Anyway, like I said, this may not be for everyone, but if uh, vampires, cults, uh, blood farms, and human cows sound appealing to you, then this is definitely gonna be your jam. Thirst has a dope Blu-ray release from Glassdoll Films. Um, it's also streaming on Shudder and for free on Tubi. An exploitation kung fu movie, you say? That's right, up next we've got another Brian Trenchard Smith banger. 1975's The Man from Hong Kong. Nobody is safe. 
on the man from Hong Kong. Listen, there's a Chinese cop in town. He's beginning to annoy me. Yeah, I think he should meet with a slight accident. A Hong Kong cop and martial artist, Bang Sing, played by Jimmy Wang Yu, travels to Sydney to extradite a drug dealer, played by the awesome Sammo Hung. Hung's character is assassinated, and the detectives suspect local crime lord Jack Wilton, played by George Lazenby. Now it's up to Fang and the local detectives to take him down. I honestly could have done a whole episode on Brian Trenchard Smith movies. He truly is one of Australia's greatest exports. And as with most of his films, uh, especially from the 70s and 80s, the action and stunt work is absolutely top notch. Uh, it's some of the coolest shit filmed in the 70s to be sure. Okay, so the story's kind of cliched and stupid, and Jimmy Wang Yu is wooden as fuck. But my god is this movie bonkers, and an absolute blast. For example, it starts off with Roger Ward getting dump kicked by Sammo Hung on top of Uluru, and then a car crashes and explodes right in front of it. My god, this shit could only happen in the 70s. This is Australia, mate! Not 55 days at Peking! The cast is also great. We've got cult actors like Roger Ward and Hugh Keyes Byrne, who you know from Mad Max, as the she'll be right type of detectives. George James Bond Lazenby as the Kung Fu crime boss and legendary Aussie stuntman Grant Page kicks some serious ass in a short roll. He has a chase and fight scene that goes for nearly 15 minutes. It's worth watching uh, for that alone, really. Another great selling point for me is the awkward and ridiculous sex scenes. I've honestly never seen anything like it. Apparently old Jimmy wasn't too fond of Caucasian girls and boy oh boy can you tell. Zero chemistry between himself and any of his female co-stars. Mm, this is nice. What did you expect? Acupuncture? It's tonally crazy and Jimmy Wang Yu is kind of unlikable, but it's a hell of a lot of fun and pretty much the definition of an Ozploitation film. The Man from Hong Kong is currently streaming on Amazon Prime and once again, Umbrella Entertainment has a fantastic Blu-ray release of this film, uh, packed to the wall with special features and the second disc also has a bunch of other Trenchard Smith films on it. Definitely worth purchasing if you're a collector. Okay folks, we're jumping back into horror again with 1978's Long Weekend. There are secrets. There are mysteries. There are forces beyond imagination. Challenge them and every living creature, every blade of grass will turn against you. Prepare yourself for the fright of your life. Ah! Christ! Long weekend. An experience in terror and suspense. Ah! A bickering married couple take a camping trip on a long weekend to help mend their relationship. As the weekend progresses, the couple partake in reckless behaviour that demonstrates an increasing disrespect for the environment. They soon discover though that nature is in, in a very accommodating mood and that their relationship issues are the least of their problems. Now on paper, uh, Long Weekend sounds kind of stupid. Um, I actually held out on watching it for quite a while uh, because of the synopsis. But um, after watching a few other movies penned by Everett DeRoche, um, I thought I'd give it a go and needless to say, I was pretty blown away. Now, DeRoche is definitely uh, trying to make a statement here about how we as humans treat the environment and that you kind of reap what you sow. You know, preachiness aside, there's still enough exploitation in the movie for it to be classed as exploitation. It's a tense and atmospheric little eco-thriller that's really well written and acted. It's also a great snapshot of uh, 70s Australia. Um, I definitely recommend it if you're a fan of er Everett DeRoche's other work, uh, 70s films, um, Aussie horror, and of course, exploitation films. Long Weekend is currently streaming on Amazon Prime, 
and uh, Umbrella Entertainment also have a Blu-ray and DVD release. Last up, we've got a heavy slice of Aussie neo-noir, 1978's Money Movers. What sort of security man can afford not to take it seriously? You've always said you were the one person who could rob this place. Yes, that's true. Brian, your truck, our truck, will be the second last one in. I got two million dollars in that van. Two million bucks, what's a bloody matter? You've been around money too long. You're going off your head. Looks like he couldn't find his way out of a light fog. <laughs> <laughs> When an armoured car company is repeatedly targeted by robbers, drastic measures are taken to tighten security. However, what if the threat lies from within the company's own ranks? Money Movers is directed by Bruce Beresford, who's responsible for some uh, definitive Aussie classics like Breaker Morant and The Club. But for me though, this is his crowning jewel, his absolute masterpiece. Bring in the nail clippers. <laughs> They say the counting house is impregnable, but someone has a plan to relieve it of $20 million. There's a plan to take it from him and one to stop him. The lucky ones only lose their toes. Great cast also with the likes of Charles Bud Tingwell, Ed Devereaux, Tony Bonner and a fresh face Brian Brown. This is a really strong recommendation from me, um, especially if you like heist films, neo-noir and just Australian films from the 70s. Umbrella Entertainment have a really cool DVD for Money Movers and I must give a shout out to Umbrella for releasing so many of these lost gems on DVD and Blu-ray. Um, it's also streaming on Amazon Prime and Tubi and if you have a look on YouTube I think you can find a fairly decent rip of it. Now, as per usual I had a fairly staunch shortlist of films for the episode. Um, I left some off because A, I felt like they already had quite a lot of love and B, they weren't really that accessible. But here's some honourable mentions coming up anyway. For over 200 million years, the crocodile has roamed the swamplands, coexisting with the people of the land. Today, it faces its greatest predator. Another attack last night. Two fishermen. Fishermen, that's a laugh. They were poachers. Poachers or not, they are big. Looks like you've done it well and truly this time, Besser. Me? It was one of your crocs that did it, not me. This is the one we thought we'd never see in our lifetime, Matt. Hey, do we have to kill it then? Yeah. Road games. The truck driver plays games. The hitchhiker plays games. Aren't you kind of young to be hitchhiking out here all by yourself? Aren't you kind of old to be picking me up? And a killer is playing the deadliest game of all. Oh, he's just killed a girl. Did he make love to her first? I don't know. What's the difference? It makes a lot of difference. I think in order to play the game properly, we have to know what he thinks of women. chilling investigation beyond medicine beyond science beyond the five known 
driving sensors. In that twilight world between life and death, Patrick is preparing his very own day of judgment. Patrick. In the 1970s, there was Clockwork Orange. Then in the 1980s came Mad Max and the Road Warrior. Now comes a startling new vision that takes you into the apocalypse and beyond. Back to the old drive-in you used to know and love. Only now, when the show is over, there is no way out. Dead end drive-in. Right now. I'm not getting through to you, am I, son? No cabs, no buses, no transport. So, you're here, you're here, you're here. You're here. What to do with you? Government, government, go, 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 go. This is your heart. You can't tell me they don't want to get out. Now, now. Yeah, but they know they can't, son. There's no future. No future. Well, that's a wrap on episode five, homies. Thanks for sticking around for the full episode. Uh, I hope that you have a fun movie field week. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. I'm Prone, I'll catch you next time. Peace. Peace.